YouTube, what's up? It's your boy Koozie, and welcome to my first ever Phasmophobia guide. This is going to be the complete beginner's guide to Phasmophobia 2024. Uh, at the time of recording this video, there's about to be a console update that's about to be released, so a lot of new players are going to be coming in. So I figured it'd be good to make a guide that kind of covers everything you need to know as a beginner player. Maybe you're not a beginner player. Maybe you've, you know, kind of dabbled in this game, maybe played with your friends, and you want to, like, start playing solo, but you're too scared, or you've done like five contracts and you keep dying uh, because you kind of are having a hard time understanding like the game, difference between like ghost hunt, ghost events, all that stuff. Well, this guide uh, will cover all of that, okay? I'm gonna try to be as in depth as possible, but also try to be concise. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play a few contracts on a few different maps and explain um, kind of what I'm doing as I go and try to help you. So uh, do me a favor. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give me a thumbs down. If you want to find your way back for more content like this, make sure to hit, hit the subscribe button uh, with the notification bell enabled. And you can also come check me out live over on twitch.tv slash koozie. The link for that is in the description, okay? Um, so without further ado, enough pitter patter chitter chatter. Let's get into it. Mile high view here, okay? What is Phasmophobia? Phasmophobia on the surface is a horror game where you are a paranormal investigator. Your job is to go into uh, the map and discover the ghost type, okay? Um, but once you get past the horror aspect of it, this game is very deep. It's got a lot of, like things you got to know about it to really like enjoy the game so to speak um and uh once you kind of start tapping into that and start understanding like okay what does each of the equipment do uh there's 24 ghosts in the game like you know what what's their behavior stuff like that uh the game really starts to become fun and immersive okay so you're going to be using uh the equipment here that you have um when you first start out you're not going to have all of this stuff that's going to come later on and you can upgrade each of these items to uh tier three um now some of the tier three items are doo-doo uh some of the tier one items are the best out of that category so for instance like the the thermometer um but it's fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Tanglewood and we're just going to jump straight into it. Uh, by the way, my difficulty is nightmare mode, but the only difference is I have all three evidences provided, the breakers on, and I'm going to make sure that the contract, uh, the weather is set to fog for most, um, the most money. Because if we have it set to random, it's 330. If we set it to fog, it's 332. Whoop, whoop. Let's go ahead and save that as well. Okay, so let's jump in. Okay, so when you first uh, spawn into a contract, you have all these screens here. Uh, that's the other thing that I meant to mention uh, with uh, my custom settings. I have all the screens enabled here. On nightmare mode, you get two evidences, and the screens are disabled, and uh, there's a few other things, but um, for the sake of immersion and to have... The best understanding because i myself is also am also trying to improve at this game um i have all of these uh enabled so your sanity meter here is perfect for understanding where you're at and how safe you are so to speak okay uh most of the ghosts will start their hunt at 50 percent sanity uh there's a couple edge cases in in the sense of like the demon and the thay they'll hunt around 70 to 75 percent sanity um and then you have other ghosts that will hunt below 50 percent uh, your activity meter is exactly what it is. It monitors the ghost activity in the home. Uh, there's nothing that's going to happen until you open the front door. So I'll show you a quick little tip, uh, a quick little tip that you can do if you are specifically playing solo that will help you out tremendously. It'll save you a little bit of time. Um, we'll get to that here in a second. But the other useful thing about the activity meter is that you can use it to determine different types of ghosts like a poltergeist or the twins. Um, it will also be useful for potentially finding the EMF five evidence. Um, and you can sometimes, I'm not going to say for sure because it's, it's been speculative, but if it jumps five levels, at least five levels, and it's not, you know, zero to 10, like a hunt, uh, it is more than likely, not always more than likely EMF level five evidence. Okay. Uh, over here you have information like the ghost name. Um, the uh, response to here is useful for difficulties like amateur and intermediate that'll tell you response to people who are alone or everyone that's useful for the spirit box down here you have your uh, side objectives 
which uh, I'll touch on that here in a second. Over here is your uh, screen that you can use. If you set up a video camera inside, you can uh, hit the, the mouse here. It'll switch to that video camera. Uh, you can toggle night, night vision, all that stuff. So that if you don't want to check for orbs while you're in the room, you can just set up your camera, come out here, and look for it that way. So your primary objective every single time you spawn into a map is to find the ghost type. So how do we do that? We got to find the ghost room where the ghost is. Uh, so what I use when I'm starting out is I take my photo camera, my thermometer, and my flashlight. Grab the key and we get going. So the tip that I was gonna share with you is because nothing will start happening until you open this front door, what I, this is kind of cheesing and it'll probably get, uh, get patched, but you can clip through this door. You can clip items through the store. So like I can throw all of my items in here and they'll be in the house ready to go. So if you're a solo player, to save you a little bit of time, you can just like grab all of your stuff and take it to the front door and either leave it on the stoop or like actually throw it in the house. I'm not gonna do this for everything, but this is kind of a good way if you're running like no setup time to get all of the items in there so that you don't have to spend a ton of time going back and forth to the truck. Because when you're a solo player, you gotta do everything yourself. So this just saves a little bit of time. I don't like to do that all the time, but it is useful if you're like kind of, if you don't have a, a long game session. All right, so, excuse me. What, uh, what I'm doing now is I'm going to each of the rooms and I'm doing a couple different things, all right? So I'm mainly looking at the, at the thermometer. If the temperature's going up, it's not the ghost room, all right? Um, so we're gonna go into each of these rooms here until we see the temperature drop. And that's how we know it's the ghost room. Now, sometimes it's not the room. It might be in like the hallway or the foyer or whatever. Um, but hopefully that's not the case here. So it just did a ghost event. Okay, so it did a ghost event here. Temperature is slowly dropping, but it could be because of the ghost event that just happened. So we're gonna keep trucking on through here. Okay, temperature's going up. Okay, temperature is... Kinda chilling right now, no pun intended. It might be a living room ghost, so I'll explain what just happened there for a minute. Um, what just happened right there is something called a ghost event. Now, there's three different things that the ghost can do. The ghost can interact, the ghost can do an event, and the ghost can hunt. All right, uh, a ghost event has an effect on your sanity um, where in most cases it will drain 10% of your sanity. So I just witnessed a ghost event. I'm gonna go out to the truck and my sanity should be around 90%. If it's lower, we got a different problem here. Okay, so it's around 90. So this, this shows an average. So it'll go from 84 up to 86, back down to 85, you know, so don't like don't see that and be like okay my sanity is exactly 82 percent or anything like that so we're checking for the ghost room and we're also checking for a couple other things all right uh so we found the bone which was right here you want to take a picture of it first then pick it up because if you that's an air ball those always scare me that's a ghost event right there could also be a mare, which is one of the ghost's abilities. They like to turn out the lights. Um, Temperature is going up. But we're also looking for the cursed possession. If you find the bone, take a picture of it, pick it up. That's a little bit of extra money. Um, we're looking for the cursed possession. Okay, temperature is dropping? Dude, what? Okay, it's going back up. Alright, so the ghost event will have an effect on your sanity. Uh, we notice here that there is this tea kettle that fell, meaning that the ghost threw it. That's an interaction. With an interaction, the ghost will interact with things in a radius of its room, okay? So, 
because it threw this, that doesn't necessarily mean that this is the ghost room, okay? It could be here in the laundry room. It could be in the garage because it can reach through the walls. It could be in the dining room here. It might even be in the living room, okay? There's a slim chance that that's the case, but it might. So I'm really watching this. Temperature's slowly dropping in the laundry room. And it's going back up in the garage. So we know that because the temperature's dropping, this is more than likely the ghost room. All right. So what I'm also doing on top of looking for the bone in the ghost room, I'm looking for cursed possessions. Cursed possessions are beneficial for, you know, helping determine what type of ghost you're dealing with. Also finding the ghost location. There's a lot of stuff that cursed possessions are good for. Um, on Tanglewood here, uh, they will spawn in the exact same spot every single time, depending on what cursed possession it is. Okay. So the music box will spawn right here. The possessed mirror will spawn right here on this wall. Okay, just touched the phone. Feels good. Um, the monkey paw. Jesus fucking Christ, ma'am. So that's another ghost event. And sometimes it'll just pop up in front of you. Feels good. Okay. Um, so the monkey paw will spawn right there. Ma'am, I'm trying to do a tutorial here. Okay. The voodoo doll will spawn right here. And then down in the basement, there's two potential spawns. You've got this one, the summoning circle, and the Ouija board, okay? We have the summoning circle, which isn't really beneficial for us, but we might could still use it if we don't drain our sanity enough to get a hunt. So now what I'm doing is we're grabbing our next set of items to check. Where are you? Are you here? You're taken away. Okay, so we have spirit box. Let's go ahead and use that. Let's put the ghost journal down, which quick thing you need to know. All right, so you can drop an item by, I, I don't know what the default is, but uh, for me, it's G, or you can place an item. If you place an item, you see at the top of the screen, there's that little like white line that shows you the radius at which like the ghost can interact. So if it's in this radius, um, the ghost can interact with the writing book. Same with the crucifix. If it's if the ghost is within that radius, uh, you'll be protected from the hunt because the crucifix will stop a ghost hunt uh, so long as the ghost is in that radius. All right, we're going to put our dots projector down. And let's go grab our video camera to check for ghost orbs. All right, so we have the bone. We have the ghost room. We've witnessed a couple ghost events. Let's check for orbs real quick. I'm not seeing any, but I also need to just double check this is the ghost room. Temperature is still slowly dropping. Alright, so we're not seeing orbs. So a dead giveaway for the ghost room, if you don't have a thermometer, is the freezing breath, as well as ghost orbs. Ghost orbs will always be in the ghost room. While we go back out to the truck, let's check our optional objectives again because I've already forgotten what they are. And let's take a peek at our sanity. So right now we're at around 60% sanity. So we have about 10% sanity left before we are for sure within hunting range for majority of the ghosts. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a sanity pill. Now, let's talk about playing solo versus multiplayer. So solo playing is good because it forces you to do everything yourself and it really helps you learn the game. Um, but it can be, there's a downside to it because you're by yourself and if you're not like talking like I am right now, um, a lot of times uh, the game can be a lot more scary because I find that whenever I'm like playing by myself and the... It touched the door, so let's see. Which door did it touch? It touched the microwave, too. Okay, so we have UV. Feels good. Um, if you're playing with multiplayer, a lot of times it's beneficial because you have other players that might be more experienced than you. Um, but also, it just it makes you more confident. Like, you're not as scared because you have other people playing with you. So that could be a big thing that could help you start now. Um, but the downside is, is like, if there's four of you, you don't get all four of these sanity pills. Because I'm playing by myself, I've got every single one of these sanity pills to myself. 
which could be which can mean whether or not I survive this mission or not. So what I'm doing in this video is not only breaking down like my thought process while I'm uh while I'm trying to do an investigation, me personally, I'm trying to do a little bit of personal improvement. So I myself am still kind of a beginner. I've got like less than 100 hours, but I've done a lot of research on this game here recently, and I'm now trying to like put it into practice. Um, so consider this a beginner's guide to phasmophobia from a beginner. But like I said, I, I got a lot of knowledge. It's just I need to like put it into practice type thing. Um, okay, so let's step through the salt. I'm going to go ahead and take photos of that. It's throwing a lot of stuff. Could be a poltergeist. Alright. Let's see. We have three here. Just touch that door. Are we at freezing yet? No. So what I want to do is, my goal is we're going to do a couple contracts, and what I want to do is I want to find the ghost type based on evidence, and then have it hunt me, um, so that I can pick up on its hunt behavior, okay? So, yeah. So we have... We've seen a couple ghost events. We've seen ghost interactions. Now let's see if we can get it to hunt us. Um, but we still need a couple, like one more evidence. Um, one thing I will say is uh, the mimic. It's not the mimic. Because if we go over here to the journal, we see here that the evidence is spear box, ultraviolet, and freezing. However, the mimic will always have ghost orbs. It will always have ghost orbs. And because we checked the ghost room and didn't see any ghost orbs, and we can even go back to the truck screen and double check, and we're not seeing any ghost orbs. We would see them, and we're not seeing them, so we can automatically rule out ghost orbs as well as the mimic. Now, that leaves us with phantom and poltergeist. So we can, we can check for a phantom, because a phantom, one of its things is if you take a picture of it, it will not show up in the ghost photo. But we're kind of screwed because we've already taken all of our photos here. And so there's no way to really check. Um, the only way to kind of lean more towards the phantom is looking at a ph phantom will drop your sanity considerably faster. So there's a good chance that it will, that the reason why our sanity is so low from all those ghost events is because of the phantom. Um, but on the other hand, we the other ghost that we're left with is a poltergeist, and that is, you know, it, it throws a lot of stuff, obviously. So I'm kind of torn right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a smudge stick and try to get this thing to hunt. And we can do that even though we're not at 50% sanity or below. We can do that by going down to the summoning circle. The summoning circle, it touched the damn car, which by the way, if that ever happens, when you first walk in, make sure to grab that key, and then you can go over here. And just turn it off. Okay, so it blew out the candle. We can go down here and light each of these candles. Now, one thing you gotta know is that each of these candles cost, I think, 16% sanity to light. So I can light one. I'll do four. And now my sanity is just absolutely just nuked into oblivion. But the good thing is, we have a crucifix here. So if it wants to hunt, it'll start its hunt most of the time from the ghost room. The only caveat is that if it does a ghost event... Okay, so it just tried to hunt. 
And if it burns a crucifix, I believe we have a 20 second grace period before it will uh, try to hunt again. All right, so it's not freezing because we're staying right above the freezing mark. So that for sure rules out the mimic. But the only caveat is that the ghost can go anywhere in the house and do a ghost event. And if it does a ghost event and your sanity is low enough, see, so it just tried to hunt again because we're within that criteria. Um, it can start its hunt from wherever it does the ghost event. So just be careful with that. So this is where crucifixes are your friend. This is where sanity pills are your friend. And the smudge stick is also your friend because I can go in here, go into the ghost room, drop the smudge stick, like use it. And it'll prevent the ghost from hunting for 90 seconds, unless it is a uh, demon, in which case, I think it's hunting. Oh yeah, it's definitely hunting. Okay, it's not hunting, I lied. Um, in which case, if it's a demon, you only get 60 seconds prevention from the ghost hunting. If it's a spirit, you get three minutes prevention from the ghost hunting. What the fuck? The go uh, okay, it did a ghost event, but it didn't show up. That's weird. You have to be careful here. Not only that, but during a hunt, you can use a smudge stick and it'll slow the ghost down if it's if it's the tier two, but it'll also kind of redirect, all right? So one thing you gotta know, we're in like prime hunting territory right now. Um, so the ghost could literally hunt at any second. Um, and I'll explain the way to differentiate a hunt between, or differentiate between a hunt and an event, which even then I still have a hard time sometimes. Uh, like I literally were just like, oh, it's hunting, but it's not hunting. Um, but right now you see how the lights are flickering. Okay, it's not really throwing anything. Um, so if the... Oh my god, it's fast as shit. I think it's a phantom. So are you... Uh, I might be dead here. I might be dead here. Fuck! Oh yeah, I'm dead. <gasps> Saved by the, by the bell, bro. Holy shit, okay. I thought for sure I was about to die. All right, so let's talk about what just happened. So it just hunted, all right? Best way to differentiate a hunt between an event is if if the lights go out, like, completely, at the start of whatever the ghost is doing, it's more than likely an event. But if you hear the ghost make a noise, like you just heard, and the lights, like, the, the house lights start flickering, it's a hunt, okay? Biggest thing to know with hunts is that on small maps, hunts will last... Um, 20 seconds, and then I think if you're on Nightmare and Insanity mode, they're 30 seconds. Um, so as long as you can stay alive for that long, you're good. So a good rule of thumb if you're a beginner, I did something that most beginners won't do, and that's something called Looping the Ghost, which I'll, I'll talk about in a minute. Um, but if you're a beginner, most of the time you're going to be playing on like amateur and intermediate difficulty. In that case, you're going to have a setup time here. Uh, so for amateur, you have five minutes to set up. Uh, on intermediate, you have two minutes, I believe. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop all of these sanity pills to keep the ghost from hunting. And what I would recommend is instead of using that setup time to like set up your equipment, I would go around the house and look for hiding spots, okay? So, for instance, you can hide in closets if they're open. This one's open. Um, that one is not. You have this closet. Um, there's not really any hiding spots in here, so I would kind of stay away. Um, you can... Go down to the basement sometimes and there will be hiding spots. Like, for instance, over here there will be like a plywood thing. Um, but that's not the case here. The hiding spots are most of the time dynamic. So your best bet is going to be like stuff you can crouch behind or like lockers. Or you can do what I did 
where I did something called looping the ghosts. If you've ever played Call of Duty Nazi Zombies, it's the same thing as like training the zombies, where like you get the ghosts to like kind of run in a line behind you. Um, and I'm still not the best at it. Like, as you saw, I almost died right there. Um, but all you have to do is just get it to, to kind of follow you around an object here. Now, the, the caveat is when you do loop the ghost, you have to, if you want to stay alive, and this, this is for if you're looping it or hiding, you want to fucking turn off your flashlight. Because, and another thing to do would be to turn on push to talk instead of using open mic. Because if the ghost hears you talk, then it can detect you and come to your location, even if you're hiding in a closet, okay? Um... If you have a flashlight on, but you're not talking, it can still detect you and come to your location, okay? Um, so have your flashlight off, you know, have push to talk on, and you'll be fine. Um, the other thing you can do is crouch to break line of sight. If you have your flashlight off, and you're crouching behind something, then you've broken line of sight. Um, which is why you saw the ghost after I smudged it and came over here, it went like somewhere else, okay? But most of the ghosts in the game, whenever they hunt, if they see you, they'll speed up. Which is why I almost died right there. But I outlasted the hunt, so we're good there. So let's see. We still have to figure out what we're dealing with here. So... It's throwing a lot of stuff. But most of the time... Okay, it's like right below... Dude, I don't know. Is this freezing? No, it's not. I think... Here's what I think. I'm thinking we're dealing with the Poltergeist. And here's why I say that. The Phantom has an ability where it can teleport to your location, much like the Wraith and the Banshee, okay? It's not really doing that. But I'm also kind of hesitant to select poltergeist because during a hunt, the poltergeist will like throw a shit ton of stuff. But I don't know. We're just going to go with poltergeist and hope for the best here. I didn't do the photo of the ghost and the paranormal or yeah, paranormal sound, but it's fine. We can do that in the next hunt. But. It was the mimic, but we didn't see any orbs. That's odd. Okay. So you're going to get it wrong. At the end of the day, remember this. It's just a game. It's just pixels. Um, you will always be able to make more money eventually. Um, and the ghosts are quite literally just AI. So let's go to Edgefield, actually. Okay. So we have Stacy. Our optional objectives are average sanity below 25%. Cleanse the area near the ghost using incense. And repel the ghost with incense while it's chasing someone. All right, so let's grab, not that, let's grab this and this and get to work. Now, it's very important that you spend the time looking for hiding spots, but also turn on the breaker. The reason why I say that is because if you are in a room with the light on, you will not drain sanity. Unless you, uh... Unless you have, like, a ghost event happen or something like that. But even then, you're good. Alright, so, I still have to brush up on my Cursed Possession spawns. But, here at, where are we at, Edgefield? Edgeview? Whatever. Um, I know that the music box spawns right here. And that the tarot cards spawn right here. Um, but outside of that, couldn't tell you. But it's fine. Alright. So, we can use the music box if we really wanted to, um, but I'm kind of sussed out about that, you know what I mean? So, we're just going to hold off on doing that. So, right now, we're just going to kind of raw dog it. Now, this map is a little bit tricky because you see this room right here. It's all the way on the other side of the house. Now, the ghost, if that is the ghost room or if this is the ghost room, it can reach through that wall and like touch stuff in here okay so even though it's all the way around the other side of the house it still could potentially interact which makes it a little bit more challenging 
All right, so we're doing what we did last contract, where we're checking all the rooms for the temperature dropping. So far, nothing. And we're also looking for the bone as well. We have our cursed possession, so we're good there. Uh, you can also, like, ask it to give you a sign, and it might do a ghost interaction. Can you give me a sign? And then sometimes it won't, because the ghost hates us. If it didn't, why would it want to kill us, you know? Alright, so I'm kind of being stupid here. And walking around in the dark a lot, so my sanity is probably going to be draining quite a bit. Temperature is not dropping at all. So yeah, I'm hoping this guide is helpful, and if, if it is... Or if you have any questions, you can always just leave me a comment. If you are interested in something that I didn't necessarily cover or go, go more in depth on. Okay, temperature dropping in here. Is it that room or is it the bathroom? Okay, it's definitely this back laundry room. Feels good. We got that going for us. All right. You can always just comment as well. Um, with me being a smaller content creator, the benefit is, is I read every single comment and can reply to every single comment, so, you know, don't be a dick. But, yeah. But hopefully this is helpful, um, because I know for me, I used to be scared to play this game. But now that I'm starting to understand it a little bit, where are you? Are you here? Are you close? Are you friendly? Close to okay. So it's definitely Spirit Box. Feels great. We have our ghost room. We have our cursed possession, which we took a photo of, and we have the bone. All right, so we're, we're chilling there. Let's check for orbs and grab dots. But a lot of this stuff that you come to know in this game can be done with research through like, you know, watching content creators or whatever, or you know, you can just, it's just like anything else, just, you know, play, right? But if you, if you don't really understand what you're trying to do, then in my opinion, it's really not going to be fun for you. So yeah, all right, so let's get... All right, so we have ghost orbs, let's get this down. We'll leave this here for a minute, and then we're going to go grab salt. So I didn't really check for hiding spots, but that's okay. We'll put three there. We can check for fingerprints now. Okay, it is UV. Ah, uh, see? All right. Classic mimic example. Back-to-back -back mimics here. Okay. So, we saw ghost orbs. We have spirit box and ultraviolet and ghost orbs. But there's no ghost that we can select. Okay? This is, this is a prime example of a classic mimic. All right? The mimic, like I said in the last contract, will always have ghost orbs. All right? But it is not... It is not an evidence that you can like select to make it a mimic, right? So we have to uncheck the ghost orbs here. And we're left with where we were last contract between a phantom poltergeist and mimic, all right? If we get EMF five, it is a mimic, 100%. But we can already rule out everything else except for a mimic because we for sure have ghost orbs. We for sure have UV and we for sure have ultraviolet or uh, spirit box. And so by those, just those two evidences alone, we know, or those three, we know for sure it is the Mimic. So now the fun begins. Because the Mimic is the only ghost that can do every other ghost's ability. And that could be like, um, it's hunting ability, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so we're good there. So, I could wait for EMF 5 if I wanted to, but I don't really have to necessarily worry about that. Okay, so, another thing to note here is that it threw the ghost journal. 
if that happens, it is 100% not ghostwriting as evidence. There's a ladybug on my finger. What the hell? Okay. Sorry about that. All right. Uh, I didn't mean to do that. Let's grab this here. Rent the ghost from hunting. Even though we do need... You can take a photo of that. Feels good. And we can also take our salt photos too. It moved the ghost journal again. So it's thrown a lot of stuff. So like last time I was like, okay, maybe this is a poltergeist. I don't need to capture a photo of the ghost, so we're we're chilling. I can just take all these salt photos and be fine. Alright. So now what I want to do is we're going to try to get this ghost to hunt us because the Mimic, like I said, can do any of the other uh, Ghosts in the Game's abilities, which is why in the last... in the last mission, the Ghost did a Mare ability where, like, I turn on the light and then, like, shortly after, it turned it off. That's one of the Mare's abilities. Uh, it was throwing a lot of stuff. Um, if it throws a lot of stuff, like what we saw in the last mission, um, that's a, that's a pretty good giveaway for a poltergeist. Alright, uh, so, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the smudge ability, or smudge objective done. I don't have to get a photo of the ghost here. But it could be beneficial. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a smudge stick. And I'm going to do something on a YouTube video that I've never done, like, ever before. In the history of me playing Phasmophobia. I'm going to use some music box. Now, I think the way that it works is you can... You don't want to start it too close to the ghost because it will like just immediately hunt you but this is a good way to figure out where the ghost is okay so the biggest thing to note is you don't want to drop the music box after you use it you want to place it okay but you won't get the little like holographic outline thing so i'm gonna try to use this place it down and then run away and I'll show you what, what I mean by the Mimic can do any of the other ghost's abilities. Okay, it's about the hunt. Okay, so now it's doing a cursed hunt, which means the hunt is going to be 20 seconds longer. Okay, so it's speeding up right now. Oh, I fucked that up. Whatever. Okay, so we know it's a Mimic. I fucked up the smudge. I should have been... Positioning is key, okay? What I should have done right there, my plan was, was to go up the stairs and go to a hiding spot. But instead, I smudged it, like, too early, so to speak. And that resulted in my demise. But that's okay. Almost had a perfect investigation. But, yeah, so that's... That's the thing. So anytime you use a, a cursed possession, uh, be it it breaking or whatever, uh, things like the monkey paw, the music box, uh, the voodoo doll, will 100% of the time uh, trigger a cursed hunt. Um, well, for sure the music box. If the mirror breaks, it will trigger a cursed hunt. Cursed hunts are 20 seconds longer than normal hunts. And every hunt after that will be like a cursed hunt. It'll be 20 seconds longer than normal. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind with using the cursed possessions. It's kind of like a give and take. All right. So now I've kind of covered pretty much everything I want to cover. So now what I'm going to do is just do like a normal run of the mill like run. And uh, we'll go from there. Okay. So let's see. Round number 200. Marcia Kemper. 
prevent. It goes from hunting with a crucifix. Evidence of paranormal with an EMF. Easy peasy. Memory of your team escape the ghost during a hunt. This is literally just you got to survive the hunt and then get out. So let's try just a normal. And this might be a faster run too because I'm not so focused on like trying to explain every single thing that I'm doing. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do just like I would normally do on like stream or something like kind of just go in here and try to find the ghost and then have it hunt me so that I am improving at the game. All right, so again, Tanglewood is the only place that I know where every single one of the cursed possessions spawn. I still have to learn them on all the other maps, but I do know for a fact that the tarot cards will spawn right here on Willow Street. Here in the garage, you have two. You've got the mirror, which is our mirror, uh, our cursed possession here, and then you have the Ouija board, which will spawn right here. The mirror is like by far my favorite because it's the easiest to understand. All right, all you do is you just pick it up and then you use it, and then it shows you the ghost room, which I don't know if that's the. I'm pretty sure that's the basement. It is the basement. Great, we love a good basement ghost. Um, let's see. So, tarot cards spawn in there. Uh, Ouija board and uh, mirror spawn there. The monkey paw will spawn right here. And then I'm not sure where the music box or the... Um, okay. I just want to make sure it didn't turn on a light down here or something. Um, I feel fairly certain that this is the ghost room. And we can confirm that because the temperature is dropping. All right, so now I get a picture of the mirror. Okay. Let's go grab our other stuff here. Now the cursed mirror will drain your sanity like 7% every second or something like that, or a minimum of 20, depending on which took the most time. But because I used it twice, like back to back, for like two seconds each, and it was below that 20% or whatever, that's why I'm down another 40%. We haven't experienced a ghost event or anything like that. Uh, we weren't really in the dark that long, so I'm just gonna take a sanity pill to get me back up because I haven't even like done anything um so let's grab this and our emf reader because if it throws something not only will we get you know closer to an emf5 evidence but we'll also get a detect you know our side objective done let's go down here we'll check for orbs Creepy mannequin. Check for orbs. Can you give me a sign? Is it in here? We're five degrees right now. Okay, yeah, it's definitely in here. We're keeping the lights on. We got that going for us. Our sanity shouldn't really drain. No evidence or ghost events so far, which could potentially, potentially be shade behavior because a shade cannot do a ghost event when you're at 100% sanity. Which shades are my favorite because they're they're the shyest, so they're the least scary. Okay, scratch that. Diogens are probably my favorite ghosts because they're the easiest to kind of like own in a fucking hunt. Where are you? Are you here? Are you close? Are you friendly? Okay, just threw something. Let's go in here. See what I'm saying? We know that this is the go the where everything is set up is a ghost room, but it threw this saw. So anytime it throws something, it's it's considered an interaction. So that's how we know 
that we're in the right area. So I'm not seeing... Right? I'm not seeing any orbs? Or am I tripping? Okay, I just threw that. Jesus. Was that EMF 5? EMF 5. Potential shade. All right. Just turn off the... Okay, so this is the air ball event. See? That time I saw it. It, tur it turned off the light and then the ball of mist came towards me. If the light would have turned off and I wouldn't have seen the, the air ball, I probably would have jumped right there because it always catches me off guard. Freaking weenie. All right, so let's grab the ghost journal because freezing temps, EMF5, and ghost writing are the three evidence you need for the shade. Got the ghost from hunting. Okay, witness. Escape your. Okay, yep. I'm grabbing that. Uh, actually, let's hold off on that because I really don't think it's uh, it's dots, but we'll see. Let's place this downstairs in the ghost room. I always try to put the uh, ghost journal at the base of the crucifix because if it moves, I know for a fact that it's... Okay, we're at like two degrees, so no freezing yet. Where are you? Are you here? Are you close? Are you friendly? Where are you? How old are you? Are you mad? Do you like me? Do you like coffee? Okay. So it's more than likely not EMF or uh, spear box, but we'll see. Let's turn this back. Uh, let's do one more check for orbs. Just to be on the safe side. Now, I'll even go in here just to be safe. But we have freezing breath in here, so we know for a fact that this is the ghost room. We'll just do that. Um, so now, what are we left with? Goria, Oni, Shade, Jen, Wraith. We can check for a Wraith because the Wraith's little beige flag is that it will not step in salt. Because according to the journal, the Wraith can't be tracked by footprints. Which even though it's a strength, it's technically a weakness. So we'll grab the salt. And then on my next trip, I'll grab dots just to be safe. Because what do we have here? Okay. I'm not seeing any ghost orbs. We haven't gotten spirit box yet. I don't want to count it out quite yet. I'm going to place this salt, and if the ghost steps in the salt, we can automatically roll out a wraith. Okay, we're now below freezing, which is getting us closer to shade. I'm really thinking it's a shade. Okay, it just stepped in the salt. We're checking for footprints. I'm not seeing any footprints, so we can rule out that. Um, so... Okay, it threw the ghost journal. That's a new one. So it's either our Oni or the twins. And... I don't know if I touched on this. So we're left with Oni or the twins. So the twins... Or, excuse me, an Oni will never be able to do an airball ghost event like you just saw. So that leaves us with... Oh, wait, we do have UV. Okay, it's a gin. All right, so we've got all three of our evidence. <laughs> nice. Maybe I, like, had to be... Because you see how fast they disappear? Maybe that's what it was. I just had to be in here. All right, so the gin has an ability that can only be done if the breaker is on. 
Oh, did I not? Oh, that's a bummer, dude. One, two, three, four, five, six. Pain and suffering, it's all I know. There goes our perfect game, but that's okay. Uh, we can do... I think it goes from hunting. All right, so the Jin's ability is tied to the breaker. So if the breaker's on, the, the Jin's ability can be done. The way to rule out a Jin is if the breaker, if the ghost turns off the breaker, then it is not a Jin. Because in order for the Jin to use its ability, which happens during a hunt, um, the breaker has to be on. So I'm gonna try to show you the Jin's ability Actually, I really don't want to be here for 45 minutes. So I may just try to get it to haunt. Or like, at least drain my sanity a lot. So I'm gonna grab a smudge stick. I'm gonna go grab the mirror. And just drain my sanity a little bit. And hopefully get it to haunt. Because if it tries to haunt right now, it'll burn the crucifix. But the Jin's ability during a hunt is if you're down a long hallway like this, like say say the ghost room is that back room back there, the back right, and it comes out the room and it sees you for like from right here, it'll like beeline it to you. And also the gen is like a little bit faster than a normal speed ghost. So there's your, there's your sign. Okay, so my sanity probably went down another 20%. Uh, I'm running low on it's probably going to break soon. We can go out to the truck and double check our sanity. Because I think we just drained about 40% here. I don't want to trigger a cursed hunt because the crucifix won't stop the cursed hunt. Unless it's a tier 3. Alright, so yeah, our sanity is just like horrible right now. So it can definitely hunt us. Can definitely hunt us. And if all the lights go off, we know that it's... That it burnt the crucifix. Unless it changes ghost rooms. Hello? Can you hunt? Where are you? Can you give me a sign? Another thing too is crucifix placement. So... I kind of want to... As long as you're in the radius of the crucifix, you're safe. The ghost can't start a hunt. Now, because this is a ghost room, we see that the radius doesn't cover the entire room, so the ghost could technically still start its hunt from this room, it just has to be in that back corner. But because I'm back here... Okay, what... There we go, okay. Alright, so I'm gonna, like, ditch this so that it can hunt me. I have a 20 second grace period. And then it should start hunting again. But I want to see if it does its ability. I can also bait the hell out of the mimic or the the gin by just turning off the breaker, and then it won't be able to do its ability. All right, so let's plan our route here. So we got the looping spot here. We're gonna smudge it, and then go. Probably over here. I think that this is a hiding spot. If not, I mean, we can always loop it in here as well. Okay, it's hunting. We can also go... So if I... It's going to come up these stairs. The breaker's on. See how fast it is? I'm crouched behind this couch, so I don't really have- it doesn't really have line of sight of me. Okay, hunt's over. As the lights came on, or turned off. That's how you know. And that, my friends, is how we pick up on the hunt ability, as well as determine the ghost type. So we are playing, like, fully immersive, like, phasmophobia here. The goal for that is to eventually be able to do like no evidence runs. So right now I'm just kind of in like a preparatory phase, so to speak, but yeah. But nonetheless, it was a gen. Welcome back. 
And if we got the photos right, it would have been a perfect investigation, but it's fine. I got the bone, right? Okay, so we unlocked the tier three spirit box. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. We've done 100 contracts too, which is great. I can upgrade this, but that's 4,500. I really don't feel like it. Um, okay, so anyways, yo, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, again, if I missed anything or you want to know more about something that I kind of touched on, but you know, you want to know more about it, make sure to leave me a comment. Again, if you like the video, like it. If you did not like it, give me a thumbs down. Uh, and if you want to find your way back for more content like this, you can hit the subscribe button or you can come check me out live over on twitch.tv slash koozie. The link for that is in the description down below. But uh, I'm going to start doing more guides. Uh, I want to do a whole map guide. I want to do an evidence guide. I want to do an equipment guide, a cursed object guide. I got a, a list, a laundry list, bro, of stuff that I'm like going to start working on. So I want to start sprinkling those in. And uh, yeah, hopefully uh, this benefited you. If it did, again, let me know down in the comments, okay? But until next time, do me a favor, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and as always, don't stop being who you are. You're valued, you are loved, you belong in this community. I'll see you guys in the next video, okay? Take care.